So the word defibrillator for today, we, we look for the word within the word, hopefully getting an absolute <laughs> kickstart to our, our day. And this one, hmm, the context that it's actually sitting in could actually be a bit strange. So I'm trying to figure out as to what was really meant. Now it's Matthew 6. Um, it goes starting off at verse 16. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy and sour and dreary like the hypocrites. For they put on a dismal countenance that their fasting may be apparent to and seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full already. But when you fast, perfume your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be noticed by men, but by your Father who sees in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. This particular one also gets me to how people use or, or wear their situation on their sleeve. And the, there's another scripture that we're going to do now that refers to that. That when you meet them, they tell you their demise and how tough life has been. And, and oh, whoa, life could have been better if that didn't happen in my life. And they, they, that's their like opening sentence or it's their go-to and sometimes it's just because people, that's where they find their identity in their pain and their suffering. But if we carry on, it says here, do not gather and heap up and store up for yourselves, verse 19, treasures on earth where moth and rust are worn, consume and destroy, and where thieves break through and steal. So now it goes from prayer and fasting, then it jumps over to now when you are gathering uh, don't gather, don't save stuff, but out of fear. But gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor worm consume and destroy, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Now you go along and you go, okay, um, what happens if I had all this gold and I wanted to take it with me? And you know that some kind of cultures and religions, they do. They bury their wealth with the person. Hopefully then it's going to go through to the next life. So the guy's got all the gold. He pitches up in heaven and um, they look at him and say, well, all you did was bring some of the pavement. We've, we've got lots of that over here on the pavements. So what treasures are talking about? Well, it's the treasures, the spiritual treasures that are everlasting. And then verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you have a conversation at a gathering, people will talk where their treasure is. So if their treasure is about the work that they do, that's what they're going to get to. If their treasure and they find value in their pain and suffering, well, that's where people are going to go to. They're going to go and tell you about their pain and suffering. If it's their children, guess what? They're going to be bringing up that gorgeous child and the next amazing thing that they've just done. Then it goes to the, the verse that I want to focus on today. It goes and says, the eye is the lamp of the body. Huh? So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. But if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. So coming out of that, it's like wherever your heart is, so where are you looking with your eyes? Now, it could be a physical, where you're looking with your physical eyes, but also it's your spiritual eye. Where are you focusing? What are your thoughts? What are you looking at in your mind's eye? And wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. So if you are going to be a person who likes to gossip, gossip and get information on people, your eye's going to look to information that can help you own that information, that when you spread it, people think, oh, you're really connected. And you gain information so that you can use it against that particular person. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. But if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if, the, if then the very light in your conscience is darkened, how dense is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve 
God and man, mammon. Now, mammon is deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. So whatever you're trusting in, it could even be the lotto. It could be trusting in uh, manipulating somebody into giving you something. Anything that is deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in, that is not of God. The most heartbreaking thing, or one of the most heartbreaking things, I think for anybody, especially for a parent or maybe even a wife, is when the light goes out. You can just see it in their eyes. When a person is in darkness, there's no sparkle in their eye. There's no light. And it's heartbreaking where you see, see as a parent, you just see that once very happy and joyful child, um, just the light's gone out because of whatever has happened in their world. And same with the husband that starts off and he's like, da 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 off on his horse and goes into battle and day by day he gets tired or a hope deferred makes the heart sick. Well, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for a longing to be fulfilled, a longing to see that light switch back on again, Father. Father, we have people in our hearts that we know, even it, it could be us, Father, just sitting there and saying, Lord, my heart is dark. What I've been looking at with my physical eye, what I've been looking at with my spiritual eye has just given me my whole body is full of darkness. Heavenly Father, Jesus came and he came to bring the light to you. And we pray that you restore the light to our souls. Wash our minds. Clean our memories, Father. It's not for us to find our value in what we've done. It's to find our value in whose we are and what lays before us. Father, thank you for the future. That The future is where our life needs to go. Focus on what is to come, Father where we don't have to worry about our needs, knowing that they will all be taken care of. And Father, you have shown us how many times that you are there for us. It's just so repetitive. And Father, for us to get into that rhythm and understand that Jesus is the light of the world. And if ours, our eyes are focused on Jesus, our souls and our bodies will be full of light. Father, help us focus on the one, the only. Keep our eyes on him. Lord Jesus, we pray that you stay front and center. As we turn, we pray you turn with us. Holy Spirit, always nudge us and remind us. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Keep your eyes focused. And Father, we know that the eye is the lamp of the body. And our eye will be sound if we keep focused on the kingdom. And we keep focused on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Once again, Father, we've been reminded, we've been enlightened that you've got this. If we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we too can shine our light and guide others in the direction that we are going. I thank you for this. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. <gasps>